Hello everyone, welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome, welcome. My name is Tyler, and this is Dark River Paranormal. So, I have a lot of exciting things to get into today, it's why I'm not in a location investigating. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but it's been incredibly cold, and icy, and snowy, and everything else. It's made it kind of hard, uh, because a lot of the locations I have so far are ones that I can't get trespass or trespassed off of, and ones that I, you know, can go to publicly. Um, other locate like my first investigation. That one is one that you know I can only go there so many times and get so much. I could probably go there every time and get something, but it's all going to be about the same and not very uh, eventful. So I've been doing a little bit of research. Actually, uh, what ended up happening was I fell down a rabbit hole on uh, Sunday afternoon. And, uh, yeah, so what I found was extremely interesting. We're going to start out, I'm going to present a little clip here. Those of you from Quincy, comment below if you ever heard of this. Um, I moved to Quincy in 2004. I've lived here for 17 years. Never heard this story. My wife told me that uh, this Ron Brown guy was a, uh, a news anchor here in town for... I think eight years or something like that and then he moved away um but yeah uh credit for this video going forward goes to ron brown stories he's got a youtube channel hasn't posted in a long time but uh yeah hopefully you guys enjoy this video uh, it's about three minutes long and then i'll continue after it <laughs> Talk about a graveyard for stories. There's just one community in the world that can lay claim to having dug up more ghost stories than any other. More reports of devil sightings, wandering demons, and, well, just unexplained supernatural things. With over 16,000 sightings and still counting, the scariest place on earth, believe it or not, is right here in Adams County. Ghost stories are just good stories to start with, and that's, I think, the important thing about it. Quincy University professor John Schleppenbach is the curator of the largest collection of ghost stories from a single area in the world, and that community is Adams County. Thousands of first-hand account stories were collected over decades by this man, Harry Hyatt. The spectacular Hyatt folklore archive is housed in a secure location, of course, at Quincy University. In the Hyatt Collection, the undead walk and evil spirits rise. Now, whether you believe that or not, it's still pretty convincing evidence that at one time in Adams County, belief in the supernatural was a very natural part of life. And the stories continue to circulate today. Harry Hyatt hated burying a good story. Like the one about the old rebel house on 2nd in Vermont in Quincy. It was secretly used by the rebels during the Civil War, and then after that, it was said to be haunted. And one night in particular, there was a loud knocking at the door, and then someone or something pushed it open, even though it was locked tight. And in the doorway stood a demon, eight feet tall, with red skin. Those who saw it say they were sure. Even 60 years and 60,000 nightmares later, they told Harry Hyatt there was no doubt. The devil himself came to Quincy that night. On Washington Street, there's a haunted house. No one would stay in it because every night at midnight, the transom would open and shut. People would get up and lock it, but the transom would just fly open. And while the transom was open, they say the ghost of an old woman would walk about. The old woman had died in the cellar years ago. One day, haunted or not, a woman and her son bought the place. He said he didn't believe in ghosts. And that night, the first night there, at 12 o'clock, the transom started to open and shut. The son heard something, but he didn't know what, so he went out to take a look. He searched all over the house and found nothing, but then, in the stairway, he saw it. said I am coming and the man who said he didn't believe in ghosts said I am going. He left and never spent another night there. So everyone, what did you think of that video? 
I thought it was very interesting. The uh, dramatization of the situations were kind of funny, especially uh, seeing how people could dramatize things quite a bit differently now. But very interesting. 16,000 stories, paranormal, folklorish stories, have been obtained in this area. That blew my mind. I mean, I already know that there's haunted places in Quincy. Never thought it would be that huge. But I mean, the paranormal is everywhere. You never know. So, I uh, ordered that uh, Harry Middleton Hyatt, I ordered his book called Folklore of Adams County. Uh, I'm going to read through it. We might have a little bit of a Holzer Files deal here where I can look through some of his things and reinvestigate some of the locations in his book. Um, I have also, this is what makes this exciting, I talked to the QU, Quincy University Library, and they told me that I could have access to whatever files obtained by Harry Hyatt over the years pertaining to Adams County. He did a extraordinary amount of work in witchcraft, voodoo, and hoodoo. Um, that was his main focus uh, in the years. Uh, I didn't dip too much into his history yet, but what little bit I did find showed that he toured the southern states um, getting witch doctors and hoodoo and voodoo, practitioner, voodoo practitioners to uh, present their abilities to him, um, and he recorded and documented it. He has a five series volume of books. Uh, if you can find the original volume or series of books together, they sell for about 30 grand, which, wow. This guy isn't originally from Quincy. He's from the, uh, from the UK. Um, I didn't, uh, I think he moved here. Um, yeah, I don't know much of that information because this isn't all about Harry Hyatt, but it's going to pertain to his works. But very, very interesting. The Rebel House is another one I'd like to go, get into um, here in the near future. Maybe, uh, I, I don't know. I have yet to cold call places and ask if I can go and investigate because I don't know how people perceive this stuff. But we're going to try nonetheless. Now, the next part, uh, I'm going to have a pretty big series on this channel here going forward, I think. Might amount to something, might amount to nothing, but it's going to be interesting nonetheless. So, when I moved here in 2004, it was about 2005, a friend of my parents brought over a book titled Weird Illinois. And in Weird Illinois, there were some stories about Quincy, but one that stuck out to me, because when I moved to Quincy, I lived way out, uh, those of you from Quincy, I lived in the last house on the South 36th Street, um, a mile off of ghost hollow road um in this book it detailed that ghost hollow road and i'm sorry about my phone notification i should have put that damn thing on silent um it states that uh, ghost hollow road is a road that is extremely haunted blah 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 there's really nothing that makes the road haunted but the key thing that i was always interested in was talks of well it talked of a cemetery that was stonewalled hidden somewhere on ghost hollow road nobody's been able to find it supposedly really spooky really eerie different stories uh well here i'll read the story this is off of haunted illinois.com so this story is there is also said to be a haunted cemetery in the area known as ghost hollow Located south of Quincy, this eerie graveyard is supposedly haunted by a high stone wall and is filled with crumbling stone crypts. In the center of the burial ground is a black tomb that bears a one-word inscription in Latin. Few are believed to know the exact location of this cemetery, and my inquiries into the site were mostly met with silence. The few who did speak about it claimed that you could hear the sound of whispers and singing in the place at night. Now, if that doesn't give you chills, I don't know what does. But uh, when I read that snippet, it was similar to that article. When I read that when I was in eighth grade, I was like, I live by Ghost Hollow. This is awesome. So I went on an adventure. 
for a long time and never found it. Now, on Ghost Hollow Road, there are four headstones. Well, actually, I take that back. It's not on Ghost Hollow Road. Ghost Hollow curves down at a stop sign, then you take a left and an immediate right, and it takes you on Hidden Cove Road. And on that road, just off the ditch, there is four headstones sitting in a little in a little bit of woods right there. Not my property, but I have been there and looked at those, and I didn't go too far because, like I said, I don't want to be trespassed. But I didn't see any other headstones in that area. Now, I've do done some digging on Facebook. There was a Facebook group 12 years ago that was looking for this, and they came up with nothing. Someone posted those pictures and said, oh, I think it's here, and the other headstones just disappeared. Well, headstones don't just disappear and if they moved earth you would find bodies and that would be a big news story like what happened with the cemetery that used to be located where our new jail is so in my high school uh junior high and high school years i searched that um i spread the word around high school so much that it became a thing that a lot of kids went to go do they all went on Ghost Hollow to go ghost hunting. They went in, uh, there's a camp there called Camp Sacagawea that we used to go and take girls through to try to get them scared. And uh, I knew my way through that park very well because, like I said, I lived in the area and went all through it. I had a feeling that the cemetery was in that park at some point off deep in the deep woods of the park. But the problem is my neighbor's property uh, was adjoined to that property. And I had been all through my neighbor's property, and I even got into Sacagawea the back way through his property and never found anything. So, I don't know. But, 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 in my rabbit hole, I found out that Ghost Hollow is road is just the name of the road. Ghost Hollow is a very large area. Those of you from Quincy will know the crossroads. It is from Payson Road south. And they say 36th Street to the river. So 36th Street west. That opens up the area entire... Or bleh, I can't talk today. That opens up the area extremely where this uh, cemetery could be. Um... When I was doing a lot of the look, Camp Sacagawea is east of 36th Street. Those other four graves are east of 36th Street. Ghost Hollow is west of 36th Street. But that goes almost all the way to the river. So, I have a lot, uh, a lot of searching to do. Um, that also blew my mind to find out that when I lived over there on South 36th Street, that I lived in ghost hollow never knew that blew my mind would have been a lot cooler to tell people in school that i live in ghost hollow instead of on ghost hollow which i didn't but you know either way so i uh here going forward my plan is to kind of burn the candle on both ends i want to have a series devoted to searching for the cemetery again which i may have some help I have friends that would like to maybe come with me. My son has, uh, Santa brought him a go or a, a drone for Christmas and he's been itching to use it and it's a 4K GPS drone and I think that will help be the eye in the sky for us too, which will be another interesting thing that I didn't have when I was in junior high and high school. Right now would be a good time to go do it because there's no leaves on the trees, which is something I might be getting on here in the near future. So, what do you guys think? I mean, I got a lot of new stuff going forward. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, you know, with 30, 30 subscribers, uh, I don't get a lot of feedback. And uh, I don't know how many of those 30 subscribers. I know at least half of them are from Quincy. If you have any ghost stories of this area or if you'd like me to investigate anything comment below or reach out to me I have my email posted usually in the description sometimes on the end of some of my videos uh, now on to the Madison Park end of things so my last investigation I did Madison Park I'm not forgetting about that location whatsoever um, 
I just, it's been cold. And finding the good time to go out in the middle of a park in the cold, trying to go ghost hunting, has been a, uh, but it's been um, not feasible to do. But nonetheless, I will be going. But uh, in that video, I kind of said that the, the uh, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm pulling up this uh, article on my phone. Um, in the video, I showed Madison School, and I kind of hinted towards that school having a paranormal history to it as well. And I also said that my old landlord had purchased that school. Uh, my old landlord, I believe they're Catholic. I don't know if they would like me ghost hunting in there, but I'm going to try. I'm going to ask. We'll see what happens. But here is an article uh, from the same website, hauntedillinois.com, uh, about that school. So it reads as, Another haunted spot is the site of the Madison Grammar School. A woman was once brutally murdered in the house that stood at this site, and her killing was never solved. Residents who moved to the house were unable to remove the bloody evidence of the crime from the oak floorboards. They reported many strange and unexplained sounds in the house from doors opening to that of a body being dragged down the steps. It was not learned until later that the woman who had been killed in the house had been slain on the second floor and her body dragged downstairs and then stuffed into a small closet. Finally, the house was torn down. The school that was built at or the school that was built on the site is also believed to be currently haunted, and some claim that a mysterious fire that broke out here in 1982, almost destroying the school, was paranormal in or origin. Now, see, I wasn't lying when I said that, that school had some stuff to it, and uh, I did consult with my medium. Um, the, the, all that will be in my second video that comes out about Madison Park. As soon as I can go out there with the spirit box and ask some questions and not below freezing temperatures. But, hey, it's ghost hunting, right? <laughs> well, like I said, if you guys are enjoying my content, let me know in the comments below. Oh, another thing. Uh, I had a video, doesn't have very many uh, views on it, but a video where I use the spirit box at my house. Those of you that have came onto my channel later uh, after recording from Woodland and reinvestigating my second or uh, my first uh, paranormal investigation, uh, that video was mainly to see if anything has followed me home. Um, I had reason to believe that the spirits from Woodland followed me to the Dollar General that I investigated, my, my first investigation. Um, so I wanted to rule out that the stuff did or did not follow me home. I thought I may have had some responses, but I really didn't believe anything followed me home, nor do I believe that there was many responses on there that were credible, but I wanted to put it out there. My whole thing about this channel is I want to promote the truth, and, you know, if you guys don't think it's paranormal, tell me. Tell me about it. I'm open to criticism. I don't want to be that guy that people think fakes this shit because that is, like I said in my first few videos that I made, that is what probably pisses me off the most about the paranormal is so many people fake it for money and views and it's very disconcerting. Um, the paranormal is real. Uh, I went into this hoping that it was real but I lowered my expectations and it surprised me and that's why I'm doing this and it excites me even more to find out that in that video the the clip that I played uh, on, on this video that that uh, Harry Middleton Hyatt and the guy who curates all of the uh, archives that are in the uh, university they claim Quincy, or Adams County, to be the most haunted place on Earth. I don't even know what to say to that. But, I've had evidence in almost every place I've gone. 
it hasn't surprised me. Well, the evidence has surprised me, but yeah, it's just been an interesting adventure and it's going to keep getting more interesting. So thank you all for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Those of you from Quincy, hopefully I blew your mind like mine was blown. Um, and yeah, please consider subscribing and please everybody have a great day.